Okay, thank you, Harm. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm going to have to speak in English because despite my long uh, involvement with the Netherlands, I don't speak a word of uh, Dutch because everybody speaks such good English that you don't really get uh, to practice. Uh, the, the talk that I'm going to do here uh, is something that I, ha I have been doing both in practice and uh, in academia for a few years and I suspect that's the reason why Harm invited me to this uh, uh, because it, it is a project that has to do with uh, politics. Um, it's, a, it's a research on uh, envelopes uh, um, and uh, uh, why uh, I do this research has I think a, a kind of almost biographical generational <coughs> A reason because I come from a generation of architects that about 15, 20 years ago started practicing and uh, uh, were uh, interested in, uh, in the, the kind of emerging uh, scene of uh, globalization. Um, uh, this is a slide that I used to uh, deploy in my talks uh, when I was uh, starting to practice and to teach, uh, which was to illustrate the two mechanisms that uh, uh, David Harvey, uh, the, the sociologist, um, uh, says that are the mechanisms that form the, uh, the late capitalist regime, the, the, the capitalism of uh, of flexible accumulation, as he calls it. And he says that uh, this regime that we uh, all have been inhabiting now for, for a few decades, perhaps, uh, was based on regimes of spatial displacement, such as infrastructure, transport, communications, and so on, and temporal displacement, which are basically mechanisms of credit, which allow us to delay or accelerate our financial obligations. <coughs> uh, as a result of, uh, of this, uh, many of us, not, not only me, but uh, many of my uh, colleagues of the same age were uh, particularly interested in exploring a type of space that was borderless, was liquid, was about flow, was about movement, uh, didn't have the, 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 the borders that architecture usually was supposed to have. Architecture as a, as a practice that is about uh, dividing the outside from the inside or the private from the public. Uh, suddenly, those concepts that had formed architecture uh, in a way had gone. And uh, this uh, project, the Yokohama project, which was one of <coughs> the projects that, that or almost our first project in FOA, was very much an attempt to uh, play with uh, those ambiguities that uh, had uh, emerged as, as part of this new, almost utopia of everything flowing, everything uh, moving, uh, etc., etc. Uh, and then what happened? Uh, uh, that the same mechanisms that uh, we uh, had been told uh, were operating as, uh, as the, the, the pillars of uh, the global world uh, collapsed suddenly. In 2001, uh, 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 transport infrastructure, planes were used uh, as a way of bombing cities, and you all know what is happening with uh, credit systems uh, today. So those mechanisms that uh, we, we were uh, trying to capture with architecture during the last few decades uh, suddenly were, if not collapsing, uh, at least severely Challenge and so the project of the of the envelope came as a realization that actually that utopia of a borderless world was perhaps uh, or, or needed some uh, adjustment couldn't be uh, sustained and and and, and uh, we had very clear uh, proofs that that was happening uh, as borders which was something that we thought uh, were no longer uh, necessary were reappearing with uh, virulence that um, uh, was totally unexpected. Uh, that was another reason why uh, I started becoming, be uh, I became interested in, in uh, this project of uh, understanding that the world, 
the contemporary world is not about borderlessness, but about a systematic redefinition of borders, um, uh, which was the fact that we also uh, came to realize that there was an absolute border, uh, uh, which is the, 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 the Earth, the planet's uh, resources, uh, and that that border was starting to uh, uh, to crash against this um, uh, principle of capitalism as a as a system that is based on permanent growth. So uh, there is an absolute border, but the system that we are operating in is a system that that needs constant growth, and there is a moment in which maybe that growth can no longer be sustained because the, the, the natural resources are limited. Uh, now, 80% of uh, energy uh, exchange between a building and, and the outside or, or, or uh, the city and the, and, and the environment happens in the, in the border of the, of the building. And so that was another important realization on why now, if we want to remain relevant as architects, we need to start uh, addressing the problem of the border. Uh, <clears throat> the problem of the border as, a, as, a, as the central uh, uh, problem of, uh, of uh, the world to, uh, to come. And that is also uh, very much uh, a political uh, problem, uh, a problem that has to do with how do we um, uh, uh, as architects engage or uh, uh, how do we as architects can regain perhaps an agency that uh, I think has been uh, escaping from our hands already for a few decades. Uh, so the, the idea of addressing one very concrete problem of architecture which is uh, borders perhaps would enable us as a profession uh, to um, uh, address uh, problems that will enable us to again uh, be um, effective at transforming the world rather than being simply driven by uh, either political transformation, uh, that means architects traditionally has, have been using the language of politicians in order to locate themselves politically. I, I, again, I come from a generation that, that reacted uh, against uh, uh, political engagement almost in order to be able to uh, uh, explore this kind of brave new world of uh, late capitalism we said well you know yes maybe uh, developers and uh, clients and planners are really bad people and we as architects need, need to fight against them which was perhaps the position that uh, uh, previous generations uh, uh, took in terms of dealing with politics as architects, we intentionally said, no, we don't want to have uh, an upfront uh, political uh, position, we want to practice architecture. And I think that the, the, the opportunity that appears now before our eyes and our hands is that we can perhaps re-engage with politics, not by using the terms of left and right or uh, you know, progressive or conservative, but by addressing very concrete, uh, polit uh, very concrete um, uh, spatial and material problems. We, we see that every day in, in politics, electorates today are no longer faithful to uh, party politics. They tend to vote uh, in respect to very concrete matters, whether a highway is going through a certain place whether uh, there is an urban uh, planning operation that is happening in a, in a city. And people do not vote uh, right or left, depending on, on their, their traditional allegiance, but they vote for the person or the people or the team that they believe in that is taking the right uh, attitude to solve these specific problems. That, that's why I believe that, that in that uh, new uh, concreteness of the political world that that is dictated by by the by the uh, swing electorates that we that we see every <coughs> day taking more and more importance uh, are just an opportunity for architects to to become engaged in politics from our own side and and so the project of the envelope in a way 
was an attempt to start talking about architecture um, uh, in, a, in, 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 in such a, a way that we could talk about politics without necessarily being talking about uh, um, uh, right or left and, and things like that, but talking about the specific problems of architecture. And the envelope, um, the, 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 the whole uh, proposition of the envelope was uh, uh, proposed, the hypothesis, that the shaping of the exterior of the building, the massing, not, not just the skin, but the massing and the skin uh, are now, or have now replaced the section and the plan as the, 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 the device that architects can use uh, to crystallize, to form uh, uh, to form the, the, the environment. There was a time where, where uh, architects wanted to, in a way, capture or shape the way the society works, the politics of the society works. They used to uh, work with plans and sections because those were the mechanisms that set up alignments, adjacencies, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the theory that I am trying to develop is that it is now the envelope, the mechanism that is more effective at addressing the contemporary uh, problems of, uh, of uh, uh, political problems uh, related to the, to the construction of the built environment. So the theory of the envelope, or the kind of general theory of the envelope that I, I'm going to try to, to explain, uh, what was trying to do was to marry uh, 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 the, the traditional uh, uh, side of the, the discipline uh, of architecture as, as a kind of language, as a kind of compositional device, as a kind of expression of the building with another set of parameters that have, have to do with environmental performance of, uh, of, uh, of the building. The, the, those two types of knowledge have already been existing for uh, for some time in the, in the field of architecture, but I don't think that they have been ever brought together into, into a, a more comprehensive form of the, of the discipline. And so the proposal uh, that I am going to make, and I'm going to use perhaps a few projects uh, from my own practice, not so much as examples, but that, uh, as indexes of uh, perhaps potentials, is that uh, these, uh, uh, the, the opportunities, or let's say the capacities, or the affordances that envelopes uh, provide to architects are or can be typified in four basic types of envelopes. Uh, it's a kind of taxonomy that I that I made, which uh, uh, goes uh, as flat horizontal, flat vertical, spherical, and vertical. Those are, in my proposal, which may be wrong. This is uh, for you to to uh, uh, to consider uh, the the types that uh, produce particular opportunities in terms of uh, uh, political engagement without necessarily having to talk about uh, right and left. So bringing politics to our realm, to be, to be able to say is more transparent, is more uh, enclosed, is more detached, is more engaged, uh, is more present, etc., etc. <clears throat> so flat horizontal types, you all know them, they are uh, envelopes that have a pre predominant horizontal uh, dimension. They are not uh, by any means uh, uh, only contemporary. They existed uh, for uh, uh, centuries, but uh, obviously because of certain uh, conditions uh, requiring the type of infrastructure that handles large amounts of flow uh, have become in the last few years uh, quite uh, important. And what is important about, or what is interesting, or where I see perhaps potentials for architecture to engage into this uh, 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 political reformulation uh, of the envelope is that these typologies often are so large that they contain nature. They, uh, they have a particularly interesting relationship with, with nature. Ones that they can contain it, you've all seen uh, shopping centers having this kind of miniature uh, uh, miniature gardens that uh, mimic nature. Uh, uh, you have also seen, uh, due to certain uh, contemporary technologies, the fact that uh, green roofs and envelopes that are in some ways merging with nature are increasingly uh, uh, common. 
uh, and, and these uh, typologies have, uh, so one of the questions that this uh, typology uh, poses is whether, whether we can, uh, uh, in what way do we relate the natural with the artificial, which I believe, uh, not only me, but other people like Latour or Sloterdijk have been uh, talking about that as one of the crucial questions, uh, political questions of, uh, of, uh, the, the, of today. So whether nature is left outside, whether uh, these uh, vast uh, surfaces uh, planted can become perhaps new grounds is something that obviously is in the air. Many architects are uh, dealing with this. The other interesting question about this typology is that it's so large that actually has almost no uh, concern for the horizontal border because it's actually neither climatically nor functionally relevant to the functioning of these new uh, organizations and architects basically have nothing to play with and end up uh, pretending that they are doing architecture, uh, uh, deploying certain things that look like architecture but actually have nothing to do with this envelope as, a, as an actually effective uh, way of uh, mediating between the natural and the artificial, the urban and the, and the, <coughs> uh, and the commercial, etc., etc. Uh, this is a, a, a project that uh, uh, where we had uh, is a project that we built a few years back in Istanbul in this uh, place, which was sitting right next to this. This is the flat horizontal type by excellence today. Uh, uh, abstract uh, thing deployed, flattening the ground, having nothing to do with the surroundings, uh, uh, having an environment that is totally uh, controlled artificially, daylit and ventilated and heated uh, artificially, that is basically the, the paradigm of the, the, the uh, flat horizontal. And I think the missed opportunity, the, the bad politics of the flat horizontal uh, uh, envelope are all... Uh, 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 so we are basically next to, to that, and you can see what uh, uh, the section of uh, IKEA uh, looks uh, like and the section of our, our building does, which is basically uh, to break that uh, uh, envelope, to uh, try to uh, turn that vast surface into a new ground that uh, is uh, no longer uh, uh, historical ground, a ground that is, uh, that is like the land, which is obviously a very politically charged uh, world. Uh, world. It's, a, it's a ground that has been artificially uh, manipulated and that uh, uh, turns this <coughs> type of commercial facilities. And I think it's important that we, we look at commercial uh, projects as also opportunities to do politics. Because uh, perhaps previous generation would say, no, but you don't want to get involved in this. This is actually bad. This is meant for profit, etc. Et there is no, no, nothing good that ca uh, can come uh, out of engaging in these kind of projects. And I think the, the, the theory that I'm trying to uh, construct has to do with how to make these projects perhaps more engaged with, with the environment, how to ventilate, how to daylight, how to use this uh, ventilation and, and daylighting of the building uh, as a way of forming a landscape that can be uh, uh, enjoyed by the people and, and can uh, in a way destabilize the, the, the ground. Second project uh, uh, in this category is a project we are doing now. It is a kind of perverse project uh, because uh, th this is a Birmingham New Street uh, station, central station in Birmingham is being refurbished, but we don't get to refurbish it. It is a big engineering group that refurbishes it, and we are given the commission of simply giving it a new face, wrapping it and making it uh, representative. But representative of what? Because, because we cannot even touch the, 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 the envelope uh, because inside there is a shopping center. So, uh, uh, so what do we do? Uh, and so the idea that we came up with, uh, Birmingham as a city, that is a little bit perhaps like uh, some uh, cities in, in the Netherlands, it's a city of transport, a city where people come and go all the time, and, and so we thought that maybe since we couldn't give depth, and, and this is very important of the project of the envelope, the envelope is not about the making of the surface of the building, which is something that has been also being explored uh, 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 intensely in the, in the field in the last uh, few decades, uh, the, <coughs> the envelope is about gaining depth. In this case, 
we cannot gain depth towards the inside because it's forbidden. So we can only gain depth towards the outside. And, and so the, the idea of this project is how to gain depth uh, towards the outside and how to make the facade reflect uh, the field of things, the field of flows, of clouds, of information, of people, of trains that are happening uh, uh, around the station. So we devise this cladding as a, as a surface, as a reflective surface that selectively reflects some of these flows happening around the station and you see that basically what we do is to measure with a number of sections the space outside this uh, big uh, station that we cannot uh, uh, touch and uh, uh, by uh, making a series of sections calculate the slopes of these mirrors uh, so that we always sel uh, select the, the sky or the commuters or the trains that are happening uh, below the, the the building and at the moment are not visible to the to the citizens like in this in this uh, case and with these sections basically we we uh, uh, wrap the existing building so that the uh, the wrap of the of the building will actually uh, since we cannot say anything about the inside at least we can say something about what happens in, in this milieu full of flows that uh, surrounds uh, the building. These are images of uh, of the building, uh, and this is basically what it's supposed to to do. It's supposed to reveal a number of uh, changes of color, flows of people that uh, that are around the, the station through the day, and, and in a way make the building uh, express uh, those changes in the in the environment of the of the building. This was an animation that is not running, so we are going to move to the next typology. The spherical typology is a typology that, that is, has basically the same dimension in, in height, in width, and in, in, in depth. So it's like, a, it's like a ball, or it's like a cube. What is interesting about this typology, that it, it is the typology that has more cubic meters of air per square meter of external surface. What does this mean? that there is uh, less uh, force, less constraint to the surface in terms of delivering a certain environmental condition to the, to the outside. And, and this is a typology that has been, uh, I mean, this is also an a spherical building, whether you believe it or not, or this is a spherical building. I mean, spherical, I'm not saying the geometrical sphere, but the fact that it is equidimensional in every uh, direction. This is also a typology that has been uh, 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 used in the in the past, uh, and usually in respect to uh, kind of manifestos. Uh, this is not a functional typology. It doesn't work without air conditioning, and you can see that in the past, this type typology of uh, buildings have been very much about making manifestos. So it's a typology that normally responds to uh, public buildings, buildings that have a very high uh, iconographic demand, but a very low performance or environmental uh, performance. So it's almost like buildings that need to present something, to state something, rather than to solve an environmental uh, problem. And so architects, uh, with this kind of freedom of not having to perform, uh, uh, environmentally speaking, uh, I mean, uh, uh, basically have used all sorts of, uh, or develop all sorts of ways of uh, producing more uh, and more interesting patterns in the, in the surface, uh, which, funnily enough, uh, uh, tend to be differentiated. It looks almost as if there is a kind of political unconscious uh, that today buildings that represent the society we live need to have uh, an envelope that is uh, uh, differentiated, that is, uh, um, uh, you know, I mean, this is a kind of uh, amazing case. Uh, 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 the Chinese government commissions a number of foreign architects to do uh, large buildings in Beijing and they all end up in some sort of homogeneous pattern that is differentiated, that is saying we are no longer uh, the Mao suit, we are able still to do very large infrastructure, very large projects, but uh, we are catering for differences. Uh, and so uh, uh, I brought uh, uh, one uh, example of this, which is not not uh, strictly uh, um, uh, a spherical uh, building, but but the kind of speciality and the kind of devices that it uses 
uh, has to do with again how to make how to give depth uh, to that crust of uh, uh, surface uh, that that uh, that usually used to be associated to to skins to envelopes. The envelope is not about making more interesting patterns. It's about trying to gain depth, either inside or outside or both ways. Uh, this is a, again a commercial uh, project that we finished a few uh, years back for a department store in, in Leicester, um, <coughs> where we did the projects, but actually, as you all know, uh, 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 retail projects, uh, this was a cinema uh, complex with retail, uh, those projects are no longer for architects. You are told what to do, and your capacity of acting is very much in the in the envelope. That's where where, where uh, clients are looking at you for because they don't they don't want to invent a new type of uh, shopping. They know exactly what type of shopping they want. Uh, so uh, uh, we we the the argument here was try to to collect in that envelope something that had to do again with the kind of larger culture of Leicester as an industrial city that had to do with the production of fabrics, uh, the, 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 the tenant of the, of the building is John Lewis, which has this kind of history of uh, hosiery, etc., etc. So all these things were trying to embed into the, into the skin um, uh, some of the, the identities of the, of the surroundings, but uh, uh, trying also to avoid having a, a, a hermetic enclosure, which is what normally these buildings are, uh, as you saw before. So what we proposed was a, uh, quite a sophisticated uh, system of, of, a, of a double uh, uh, glazed system around the building that uh, um, uh, enabled a certain transparency between the shoppers and the citizens, which is something that, that is usually, it is actually, I mean, when you get involved in these projects to do this, is a major political achievement, in my, in my view. Because normally, uh, what your clients ask you for is a kind of uh, uh, totally um, sealed envelope that has no relationship, that detaches the internal environment with the, from the external environment. And so, uh, we went into kind of a research of patterns. We chose one because of the, the environmental uh, qualities it had. We had to protect from the sun. So, uh, a certain uh, amount of coverage of the surface was uh, chosen and then redrawn in order to allow uh, for this pattern that is, it, uh, it enables us to gradate the, the density of the pattern uh, to uh, address the different exposures of the building to the sun. And the different qualities of, uh, of uh, 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 vision between between the, the uh, inside and the outside. Uh, you see that it was scaled in order to uh, uh, kind of address uh, the ergonomics by wrapping about the heads of different uh, heights. Uh, and what is interesting is that when you are inside, you actually see through because the two patterns uh, coincide. When you are outside, it becomes like a veil that uh, allows you to see a little bit, but doesn't uh, reveal uh, entirely the inside, which would have been a political uh, uh, problem for the, uh, for the client. And, and because it, it is a reflective uh, uh, pattern, it actually uh, produces certain um, uh, gains of transparency and opaqueness, depending on, on how the building is uh, being hit by the, uh, by the, by the sun. Uh, and at night, obviously, it produces other, other effects. Uh, the, the third typology that I would like to uh, explain is the flat vertical. I, I don't know how much are we, uh, are, are we on time. I can also uh, leave it by sudden death. If, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, the flat vertical, 90% uh, uh, of the buildings uh, uh, built in cities uh, after the Enlightenment uh, correspond to this typology, which is a highly functional typology. Flat vertical envelopes are those that have an optimal width, residential or commercial or whatever, and then basically there is an extrusion of that width to form borders that form uh, uh, the fabrics of, the, of, uh, of cities. And, and the limit between the private and the public realms of the of the city, uh, as you can see in some of these. I mean, one of the say political uh, uh, interests of this typology is that if you see how the traditional uh, city operates, 
that border, the limits, the open public space from the open private space, except in the modernism, and this is the drawing from the Corbusier, but you can see actually that the whole ground of the city has become public. The, 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 the flat uh, vertical typology no longer divides public and private, and, and this is something that then was deployed in, in a number of uh, uh, projects that we can associate to perhaps the European welfare state, like Toulouse-Lemirail, or uh, as you probably know very well, Balmermel, where there is no front or back or private or public, everything is uh, a part of the collective uh, real. And you also know that this produces certain problems. When, when there are no borders, is when problems appear. So what we need to uh, learn to do is to use these typologies in a more uh, sophisticated way. The other interesting thing about this typology and the other place where I think there is an opportunity for political engagement is that in this typology the facade is the border, is, is at the same time the environmental border, it's a very active environmental border because these typologies require natural ventilation or, uh, or um, um, daylight uh, uh, and at the same time, that face is the face of the community. is the is the face that represents the community that inhabits uh, the building. So this, uh, there is, as opposed to the other two typologies, here there is a very strong friction between the envelope performing as an iconographic device uh, and the envelope performing as a uh, as an environmental uh, device. And and so there is a number of uh, uh, things that have. Uh, appeared through the, the years, the envelope as a series of cells uh, 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 attached to each other, the envelope as a screen that doesn't really reveal what happens, but uh, so, uh, some sort of almost like a construction system. Uh, other more modern, more contemporary ones that uh, perhaps try to explore the possibility of the envelope becoming a, a device to represent an, an integrating uh, open society and so the, this is, this is uh, one of uh, uh, my uh, projects, which is also social housing, uh, where we uh, play, and, and it, it, this, is, this is a crucial, uh, I think, uh, question, in the, particularly in, in, in Europe, where we have uh, a melting pot of different cultures working in, in larger uh, uh, cities uh, that we, in a way, need to integrate, and we need to represent that we are integrating them. Uh, uh, you all uh, know uh, about, uh, about uh, um, uh, Britishness as a, as a new project in, in, uh, in, uh, in the United Kingdom where uh, people uh, who are immigrants are asked to uh, become more British, to learn English, to understand British traditions, etc., etc. That uh, as a kind of departure from the idea of the multicultural society that has been a part of the, of the policies of the British government since the 70s, and probably also uh, this case is very similar in the Netherlands or in France or in many other European countries. So this problem of, uh, of representing uh, uh, multiplicity, uh, variety, as opposed to what many governments in Europe are seeing now as a need to represent, on the contrary, represent society as a as a, as a, as a uh, connective tissue, as a problem of sameness or uh, homogeneity, to a degree you need a certain binding, uh, 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 binding uh, structure that forms uh, the, the, the contemporary society. It's not enough by representing society as a, as a kind of uh, diverse uh, field. You need to also start creating, and that is one of the problems that has been appearing France with the, with the kind of banning of, uh, of uh, uh, obvious religious signs, etc., etc., uh, 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 or uh, Britishness, or many other of these uh, issues uh, of representation is what uh, uh, I think we, we try to address here by solving the problem of the, the envelope of the building as a, 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 an environmental device that controls views and, and uh, insulation and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, with a, a homogeneous system that is differentiated by the, the inhabitants moving those, uh, those uh, shading devices and producing some sort of uh, pattern of uh, differentiation.
as you can see now. So there is, a, there is at the same time an environmental performance and uh, a uh, iconographic performance that tries to capture that political unconscious of variation that is very much in the, in the, in the kind of European context. And the last typology is the, the vertical, and the vertical obviously is the typology where uh, this uh, tension, this friction between the uh, building as a representation of something uh, and the building as, a, as an enabler of uh, uh, an environmental performance or in this case uh, a performance of achieving a certain amount of, of density is highest, is the, the, where the, the tension is uh, stronger, there are buildings uh, out there that actually represent whole political uh, uh, regimes and at the same time need to perform as, uh, as, as buildings. I mean this is, a, this is a typology that now has been uh, uh, increasingly recognized as an efficient uh, uh, type but at the same time a kind of desirable uh, type uh, uh, for urban uh, living. Uh, and, and what is interesting about this typology is that you can see in different regions of the world plans like this. This is in, in, in the Middle East where people don't want to get near the outside and want a totally uh, artificially controlled uh, environment uh, that then is uh, often wrapped with some sort of image of uh, something, uh, representation. That's where this kind of friction between the performance and the representation uh, takes it, its maximum uh, performance and, and you see the, this kind of uh, fauna of uh, uh, buildings uh, appearing and this other typology which is uh, these are plants in uh, residential buildings in, in Hong Kong where you see this incredibly complex corrugation of the surface that is aimed to provide daylight and ventilation to every single room in the building and, and so it produces uh, these type of images that have nothing to do with some sort of representation, but a kind of pure emergence of form due to perform to environmental uh, performance. So that friction in this typology is enormous. I think that there are, uh, as opposed to the, the, the uh, conventional understanding of uh, high-rise buildings, there are many uh, issues that we can uh, use in order to uh, uh, play the politics between representation and environmental performance, uh, environments, daylight, etc. Structural uh, performance also it plays a, a, a potentially a very interesting role. I just wanted to show you one experiment that we did in Princeton <coughs> uh, University, which was a kind of atlas of global high rises. We identified that there is a kind of type of two 50-story uh, towers that happens in China, happens in uh, Miami, happens in Panama, happens almost worldwide. I think it's some sort of uh, investment quantum that ends up in two residential towers everywhere. Uh, and so we, we uh, took one of these towers and we tried to identify using software what will be the most ideal plan uh, for uh, these towers, taking into account, I mean, if you, uh, these are possible uh, shapes and if you imagine towers located in the equator where the sun goes on top of, uh, of, uh, of you, uh, that the towers uh, trying to avoid being hit by the sun become flat uh, so that the, the sun hits on one small end on the roof and another end while other towers, uh, for example, in the northern, in, in South Korea, for example, where people are obsessed with uh, sun, start taking kind of uh, Y shape or triangular shapes uh, um, uh, of this. Nature. So the, the, then there was a kind of idea of the plan, idea of the level of corrugation that has to do with uh, humidity in the air needs to ventilate the, the environment. So uh, those uh, basic types evolve into a variety of uh, types. Uh, uh, that is a kind of uh, uh, approach and I'm going to finish with uh, uh, also uh, an, another attempt to draw the form of the building, the, the expression of the building with the, from the efficiencies of the, of the building, which was uh, a proposal that we made for Ground Zero as a sort of a request by Max Protech, where we said, well, we are going to build the tallest uh, tower in the world uh, uh, and, and so looking at the evolution of uh, the height, the structural evolution of the of the high rise, uh, we decided that the only way to grow taller after we uh, reach a certain limit of slenderness 
is to start shredding the towers and making them uh, buttress each other. But buttress, buttress each other structurally, but also iconographically. Uh, and so there was a number of images that we were playing with uh, when we did this project that had to do with this image of people rebuilding Ground Zero together. Uh, uh, and so this, this was the, the project, six, six towers that uh, uh, were equal in size to the original uh, twin uh, towers and that were twisting and uh, uh, leaning onto each other in order to make uh, themselves more resilient. So again, an idea that the, the, uh, the shaping of the envelope uh, can actually perform certain structural or environmental uh, performance while at the same time uh, uh, producing perhaps a new image, a new uh, uh, perception of the, the community uh, where uh, these uh, buildings uh, are supposed to be uh, located. I think this is the last image. Uh, there's no conclusion. It's an open research and hopefully uh, there will be some questions about it. Thank you very much.